Welcome to Memorial University Library's second introductory video on how to write a paper with integrity. My name is Beth Madigan and I'm the librarian at the Education Library and Commons on the St. John's campus. In today's video, we will consider writing and citing strategies. In the first video, Writing with Integrity Part 1, we discussed preparing to write, gathering sources on your topic, evaluating those sources to ensure they're appropriate for your paper, and reading the appropriate sources closely and critically. Once you've completed those steps, you'll be ready to synthesize your main ideas into an outline or the first draft of your paper. In this video, we will consider three topics, how to write with integrity when you are considering multiple sources and including those sources and ideas from them into your paper, the difference between citations, references, and bibliographies, and how those elements, references and citations, for example, work together. And finally, where to go for help if you run into trouble at any point along the way. Academics don't always agree on the best way to learn to write with integrity but they are generally unified in their assertion that beginning researchers and undergraduate writers need to develop this ethic. I believe there are a few important steps you can focus on that will always set you in the right direction. First of all, always give credit for ideas that are not your own. Always. This basic rule has been my cornerstone for writing with academic integrity. If you keep it in mind while you're reading, composing, and rewriting every draft of your paper, you'll be inclined to take better notes and keep good track of the original author's ideas that will make their way into your final paper. Secondly, you need to consider your topic from multiple perspectives. Most research expands on knowledge that already exists, but when different people consider that knowledge, or when a variety of people interpret data, multiple viewpoints will emerge. Consider those varying and often conflicting viewpoints before you begin to formulate your own ideas and write about them. Finally, keep an open mind as you consider your topic and read the viewpoints of various writers and researchers. As you become more and more informed on your topic, Remain open to having your mind changed or your perspective shifted. In our daily lives, we're constantly reconsidering and revising how we think and feel about the world around us. In research and academic writing, that process is similar but more deliberate. We need to consciously and critically evaluate sources and integrate them into our own perspectives. Once you've read, taken notes, and reflected enough on your topic to begin writing, you will need to consider the main stance or focus of your paper. Synthesize the main points of your reading into a cohesive perspective or argument. This is the thesis of your paper. You will support your thesis with ideas and critiques from your reading. Each of those ideas must be credited in your paper with a citation. More on that in a minute. When you're writing, use your own words as often as possible. You are about to enter the scholarly conversation on this topic, so find your own voice and write with that voice. You can paraphrase, rewording or the original author with your own words, or summarize, or critique the viewpoints that you've researched using your own voice. Then, Use citations to credit the original authors in your paper. Occasionally, you'll find that you want to use an original author's exact words. Using quotations sparingly can be a powerful tool to support an argument. Check your style manual for the guidelines on how to format quotations in your paper. Generally, for short quotes, use quotation marks and copy the author's words exactly as they were written in the original source. Then, provide a citation for that quotation and a reference for the source at the end of your paper. Your instructor will indicate the style guide you should use for the format of the citations and the references in your essay. If you're studying in the humanities, 
the Modern Language Association Guide, or MLA, is often the style guide chosen. In the social sciences, the guide that is most frequently referenced is the Publication Manual of the American Psychological Association, or the APA Guide. But there are several other manuals and styles that you might encounter over your academic career. Memorial University Library staff have created tools to give you the basics for in-text citations and creating references for all the major styles. For MLA, APA, and Chicago styles, librarians have also created short videos that demonstrate the basics of using that style to create your citations, reference list, or bibliography. Some style guides are also available online from the library in their entirety. These electronic resources, or ebooks, are accessed by searching for the guide's title in the library's search box. Others are available in print at the information desk of your local library branch. Most guides also have authoritative online resources, often created by university writing centers or libraries that support the use of that style manual. Style guides give good direction for formatting an essay. However, those detailed instructions are generally not required by professors for undergraduate papers. Follow your instructor's directions for formatting your paper and use the style guide they have indicated for the format of the citations and reference list or bibliography. If your instructor hasn't indicated a specific style guide, it's your responsibility to choose one and follow it consistently. In-text citations, footnotes, or endnotes are used to give credit for the ideas that you are including from other authors. In the text of your paper, these citations might appear in parentheses or as a number that corresponds to a note. The style manual you are using will direct you on how to structure that citation. Minimally, you will include the author's name, year of publication, and the page number from the original source. You will also need to complete a full reference to match that citation. The reference appears at the end of your paper in an alphabetical list. No matter what style manual you use, most references require some common information about the original source, including the author's name, the title of the article or chapter, the name of the book or journal, specific edition and volume information of an ongoing or serial publication, information about the publisher or sponsor of the work, and the specific date of publication and potentially page numbers. Any excerpt you include from a reading must be represented by a citation that indicates the specific original source material. In the text of your paper, you will include this citation. Then at the end of your paper, you will include a list of works cited, matching each citation with a full reference for every citation that you included in your paper. A work cited or reference list is exactly what the name applies, implies, a list of the sources you have specifically cited in your paper. A bibliography, however, is a list of every source you consulted in the preparation of your paper, even if you don't have a specific citation or segment of your paper that refers back to that source. Both of these types of lists are arranged alphabetically by the author's surname. The style guide and directions from your instructor will assist you in determining which one you need to include with your paper. If you're using APA style, for example, you would never include a bibliography. APA style requires that every in-text citation is paired with a reference listed at the end of your paper, and that every reference has a citation included in the body of your paper. Other styles, the Chicago Manual of Style, for example, do include bibliographies. When you compile your bibliography, you include all of the sources you consulted, including those sources that you referenced in your paper. Once you've written a full draft of your paper, review it 
to ensure you have included a citation for every idea that's not your own. In the list of works cited at the end of your paper, double check and make sure you have a full reference with all the required information, following the style guide exactly as indicated. Punctuation is very important, so match your manual's guidelines exactly. Also, include every element of the citation and reference that your style manual requires. If you're missing an element, the place of publication, for example, search for the reading in the library's search box. If your source appears, check the details included in the bibliographic record, and you're likely to find your missing information without having to return to the original source. If you're unsure or confused about how to cite, library staff are always available to assist. You can reach library staff in person, on the telephone, via live chat, or by email. Visit the Memorial University Library's Ask Us page for details on all the different ways you can contact a library staff member for assistance. Thank you and good luck.